Let's review my example solution for day three's assignment. Writing the promise returning function should be simple enough as we did this several times during day three. Let's check the input value and check if the remainder of dividing that value by two is zero. If there's no remainder, then the number that was passed in is even. So we'll just set a timeout using the value that was passed in as the timeout value. We need to pass a function to set timeout so that when we call resolve, we can provide that timeout as the resolution value. If there was a remainder on the division, we need to reject the promise immediately. Make sure that you've rejected your promise with an error object and not just with a string, because this helps Node provide accurate stack traces. Finally, we call our function with a value and then handle both the success case and the error case. Section four, Node HTTP and Express. Creating a Node web server. In this video, we're going to explore that Node HTTP module, look at how to create a web server using this module, and also how to serve files directly from your file system. Let's look at the documentation for the Node HTTP module. The URL for the docs are on the screen right now. A number of classes are defined in this module. It's important to note that this module handles both an HTTP client or agent and an HTTP server. This means that in your code, you can fetch resources from other HTTP services as well as hosting your own HTTP service. For this video, we'll be focusing on the HTTP server aspect of this module. If we look at the server section of the docs, we can see that this inherits from the net module of Node. We can also see that there are several events that will be emitted by the server once it's running. We can also see that there are several events that will be emitted by the server once it's running. For a minimal implementation, we don't need to handle all of these, we'll just focus on a couple. Don't forget to come back to this documentation if you're unsure about any of the functionality of the HTTP server module. Now we can look at how to create an HTTP server. First, we need to import the HTTP module and then set a default port that we want the server to listen on. While port 80 is the standard HTTP port, listening on this port can require special permissions. So to avoid this, we use a higher number port in this case, 8080. Now we call the create server method and pass in a callback. This is a function you should be familiar with. And this new callback is called every time a new connection arrives on the server. All we do in this callback is log the URL that the client visited in order to hit the server. And then we reply to the client by using the string hello world. And by using the end method for this reply, we're also closing the HTTP connection. At this point in the code, even though we have created a server, trying to access it would not work. First, we have to tell our server to listen for connections. And this is what the listen method is for. We pass in a port to listen on and another callback that's fired when listening has either been successful or an error has occurred. The first parameter of the callback is the error, if there is one. So if one occurs, we just log it out. We don't need to do anything special here for this proof of concept. This first parameter is the error, if there is one. So if one occurs, we can just log it out. We don't need to do anything special for this minimum implementation. The first parameter of the callback is the error, if there is one. So if there is one, we're just going to log this out. We don't need to do anything special for this minimum implementation. Otherwise, if there's no error, we log out the port that the server is listening on. Let's run this code now. We can see that the server has started and is listening. So let's try and connect. Using the curl command, we can connect to localhost on the correct port and see that we get that hello world response back. Congratulations, you've created your first HTTP server. It's important to note that we're missing lots of essential ingredients from a true HTTP server. Our implementation doesn't provide proper response headers like content type, encoding information, and others. We've only made a very bare bones solution. Let's see if we can extend our solution a little bit further before we start needing to use a library. Serving files is another key aspect of a Node web server. We can use asynchronous functions from the file system module to load resources from the local file system and then serve them back to HTTP clients. In addition to our standard HTTP example, we need to load the file system module, 
and the path module. Now in our connection handler, we make sure to set the content type header to an appropriate value for this image. The image that we're serving is just a hello world image. We then use the read file method from the file system module to load up the image that we wish to serve from the current directory and then the name of the, of the image that we're serving. But we could also perform this load action once during server startup rather than reloading this image every time a new connection arrives. Once the data is loaded, this callback is called, and then we can write that data straight back out to the client and end the connection. As before, we set up the server to listen on the port. Let's run this server, and we'll try visiting it in a browser. As you can see, when we hit localhost 8080 in the browser, we get the image back. Served as a PNG, all the headers are correct, browser knows what's going on and displays the image perfectly well. 